Hello, what's up? My name is Leo Lighto. Welcome to this video where what we're going to do is take a look at how we can go ahead and create our very first game ready model. Now, in this series of videos, we're going to take a look at how we can go from creating a high poly model all the way through the pipeline to getting that into a game engine. So that includes converting our high poly model to a low poly model. We'll then go ahead and look at baking normal maps and then we'll go ahead and take a look at UV mapping, texturing and finally, as I just mentioned, uh, importing that into a games engine. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a very simple asset. Actually, we're just going to go ahead and build a old time radio. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump straight in here and get started. Now, before I begin, uh, I'm just going to change a few settings. These are settings that I prefer to be uh, using when dealing with Max. And I'm just going to show you these because if you want to follow along, you may want to uh, use the same shortcuts that I'm using. Now, there's only one thing that I want to change here, and that is I want to use the swift loop and I want to assign that to a shortcut. So in order to do that, I'm going to go up to the customize and I'm going to go over to the option that says customize user interface. And from here, I'm going to select just any option here. I'm going to press the S and then the W. And this will bring me over to this option here that says swift loop. And under the hotkey, what we can do is if I click on this, I can hold down, uh, in my particular case, I'm going to hold down the shift and S key, which will, which will make that as a shortcut. I can go ahead and press assign and then go ahead and close that. So that's only temporary, uh, temporarily assigned that key here. Um, so if you want to go ahead and uh, make that as a permanent uh, shortcut, you can go ahead and, and save that out. So with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and set up our references here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the Alt and W key to maximize my perspective viewport here. And then I'm going to go ahead and press the F key because I, I actually want to bring the front viewport up instead, sorry. And I'm going to go ahead and click on plane and I'm going to left click and just drag a random uh, plane here. Now, once we have this plane, I'm just going to go over to the modify and I want to change the dimensions to match our reference images. So my reference image is uh, 1024, uh, sorry, that's 768, 768 by 1024. And I'm simply just gonna right click the XYZ spinners at the bottom here, and this will go ahead and center this to the center of the world. Now I'm gonna press the G key, which will remove the grid. I'm gonna press the M key, and this will bring up the materials editor here. And I'm just going to select a empty material uh, slot and I'm going to go where it says diffuse. I'm going to click the little box next to that and I'm going to go ahead and choose bitmap. I'm going to go to desktop and under here you say I have all the time radio references and uh, this is the reference we're going to be using. So if I just right click and choose preview and uh, right click and choose preview here, we can see that this is actually what we're going to be creating. So Let's just go ahead and bring in the front um, image we have here. I'm going to go ahead and choose the assigned material to select it. And I'm going to go ahead and choose show uh, <clears throat> show in viewport. I'm going to go back up a level and I'm going to set the self illumination up to 100%. Then I'm going to go ahead and press the P key to bring back into the perspective. Press the control I key to go to the arc rotate. And I'm going to go ahead and select this and move this back a little bit because if I press the G key, we're going to be modeling our asset here in the center of the world. So the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm not able to select this uh, plane and move it around. So in order to do that, we first of all need to go over to the display. We want to uncheck this option that says show selected in gray. Then when we right click this and go ahead and choose free selection. Oops, that's the wrong key there. Right click and choose free selection. You can see that I can no longer select this plane, which is uh, exactly what we want here. So at this point, let's just go ahead and open up our reference over here. So what we're going to be building is this outer wood frame today. And uh, this, I guess this speaker, um, or what appears to be a speaker. So let's go ahead and uh, get started in creating that. So first of all, we're going to go over to the create panel, we're going to go ahead and choose box. And um, I'm going to go ahead and create a about half of this and then I'm going to go ahead and press the P key and rotate and I think that the depth of this is a little bit too much so let's just scale this in something like so and I'm just going to go ahead and choose effect pivot and choose 
center to object and I'm just going to go ahead and center this like so and going back to the front view I can right click this and choose convert to edgeable poly and I'm going to go as so I'm going to select this uh, polygon here I'm going to press delete and I'm going to select this polygon and this polygon I'm going to press the F key I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose inset and then I'm going to go ahead and press delete and then go ahead and select these ones and choose delete. Once we've done that, we can go over to the, uh, the vertex mode here and we're just going to go ahead and position this a little better. So we're just going to move these in and I'm going to move these ones up. Now you can see that this is not equal proportion all the way around. So there's a few things we need to fix here. First of all, let's go ahead and select these bottom uh, vertexes and move these down so it better matches the thickness here. Let's go ahead and take these, uh, these two, or these are four vertexes here and move this in so it's a little more, um, so it represents the shape overall a little better. Now we need to go ahead and select these vertexes and I'm going to go over to the scale and I'm going to scale this just like so. And once that's been scaled, in uh, the X, we can go over to the X here at the bottom and just right click and that will center those uh, vertexes to the to the center of the, the world here. Now, what we need to do is we need to better match the overall um, flow here. So you see that this is a nice curve and this also has a curve. Now, if we go ahead and we select these edges right here and uh, we try to use a chamfer, uh, what we're going to get is uh, is that they're going to be chamfered, chamfered unequally. So in order to fix that, we need to go over to the utilities and we're going to go ahead and choose reset X form and choose reset selected. And what that does is that just resets all the transformation that data that we've just uh, created. And if we go back over to our modify panel, you can see that we have an X form on top and it's going to collapse that by right clicking and choose convert to Edge poly. Now, before we go ahead and make those curves, let's go ahead and add a symmetry. So uh, first of all, we need to go back over to our, our hierarchy, effect pivot. And in this particular case, we want to right click the X so it's in the center. So now when we go back to our modify panel and we choose uh, symmetry, so let's just press the S key to find symmetry. And then we can go ahead and choose flip. And you can see that now we have uh, something that uh, represents the, the entire shape a little better. So jumping back down to our Edgeable Poly mode, let's go ahead and uh, with these edges selected, so let's just double click on these, let's go ahead and choose Chamfer. And let's go ahead and give this perhaps maybe four, looks to be pretty good. And press OK. And we want to do the same down here. Now before we continue, actually I'm just going to create a new material. So I'm going to select this and apply this material. And I'm going to right click the animation timeline over at the bottom here, set this to about two, and then I'm going to press the N key so we can bring up the shortcut for the animation here. I'm going to set this over to two and I'm going to set the, um, the opacity down to zero here. Press the N key and what that basically does is it creates a nice transparent material for us to uh, work with. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring this all the way over to two. And go back over to our edges and let's double click here and we're going to go ahead and choose chamfer and now as we're chamfering we can get a better idea of the um, overall shape here so press ok and all we need to do now is just align these uh, in a much better position so we're just going to go ahead and manually move these around and we can do the same over here just like this and I'm just going to move this over like so perhaps bring this in and what we need to do here now is if we select these edges and let's go ahead and choose connect and uh, maybe two is going to be okay and with those two let's just go ahead and move these into a better position so it better matches the overall silhouette of our model here so let's just find a nice compromise on this one so this looks to be pretty good now we can also at this point go ahead and move these ones inwards. So let's just go ahead and do that really quickly. 
and let's go all the way over here and let's move this one up and let's go ahead and move this one down and perhaps we can add one here as well so let's go ahead and just set this to one and let's just give this I'll push this up a little bit so it's a little better now with that being said let's go ahead and bring this back down to zero and now you can see that this is what we have here so this is the overall shape and if I bring up this it looks to be about the right size uh, let's see let's bring this over yeah so this looks to be pretty good so what we need to do now is to go ahead and create these nice smooth edges so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the M key here and with our material I'm just gonna go ahead and set this to something a little darker and I'm gonna go ahead and also set the uh, wireframe here to be black. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some specular highlights to this. And the reason for this is that when we go ahead and add our chamfer um, to these edges, we can get a better idea of how the light is, um, is reacting. So we can see how much of a chamfer we need here. So with that being said, let's go ahead and we're gonna double click on these edges and double click on well, maybe we can double click. Well, okay, let's fix this first. So we just double click here and double click here and let's go ahead and choose bridge. And that goes ahead and bridges those together, which uh, which fixes that issue, pretty good, okay. So we can double click here and double click here and we wanna keep this consistent throughout. So let's go ahead and do this at the back. So just double click and we'll go ahead and create a uh, ring selection for us. And next thing to do is to right click and I'm going to go over to this option here that says chamfer. Now again, you can see that we have this chamfer. Um, let's just reset that. Okay, there we go. So I think something like this looks pretty good. Uh, let's just go ahead and press the F4 key so I don't see those lines. And yeah, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and press OK. And so this is what we have. Now, because it's going to be a high poly model, we want to go ahead and uh, get better normal data from this. So I'm just gonna go and add a turbo smooth and I'm gonna set this to about two. So this gives us a, a nice smooth uh, surface and a lot of detail to work with. So with that being said, we're gonna now go ahead and move on and build these, uh, these I guess what, they, what appears to be speakers. Um, there's looks to be like maybe three sections here and um, yeah, so it looks to be pretty easy. Now, we can go ahead and create this exactly, but I'm just gonna skip out on this uh, shorter section right here. Now you can, if you want, go ahead and add this in if you if you are uh, comfortable in doing so, but I don't wanna be spending too much time um, in this tutorial creating really fine details. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and press the L key to go to the left viewport, and I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag a plane in here. Now, once that plane is in here, let's uh, just let's just have a look at our reference image here. So maybe it needs to be a little smaller, something like so. I think something like this looks to be pretty good. Now, yeah, maybe a little slimmer. Okay, and then I'm just gonna push this out and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to edit and I'm gonna go ahead and set this over to zero, uh, down to one, sorry. So then we've got one, two, three, four. And how many sections do we have here? We have one, two, and three. So let's go ahead and set this to be three sections. And I'm gonna right click and convert this to an export poly. And I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this piece right here. And we're just gonna build on this section by section. So first section will be this one, and this one, and then this one. So let's go ahead and uh, right click and choose connect. And I'm gonna choose maybe four. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select all these by pressing the control A, right click, and I'm gonna go ahead and choose inset. And I wanna, from the drop down here, go ahead and choose by polygon. And I'm gonna push these in like so, and press okay. I'm gonna go into the perspective view here and rotate round. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose inset. And we just wanna inset this just slightly. And then we're gonna go ahead and choose bevel. Make this a little deeper, like so. And a slight bevel again. 
something like this. So what this does is this creates this uh, this sort of indentation um, effect here, this, uh, where the speaker is going to be. So let's go ahead and apply our material. Okay, and uh, well, it's not perfect right now. We need to go ahead and uh, fix a few things. So uh, first thing to do is I'm going to add this um, piece in right here where it sort of protrudes out. So in order to do that, I'm just going to go back to the left viewport and I'm just going to create a new plane, just something like so. And I'm going to go ahead and set this to zero and zero. And then I'm just going to go ahead and press the S key to bring up the snaps. And uh, if I right click on the snaps, you can see that I've only got it set to vertex here. Convert this and choose as poly. And then I'm going to go ahead and select this. I'm going to turn off my snaps for a moment and then turn them back on and do something like that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and select this piece and this piece and move it in. And then what I can do is I can take this and I can right click, choose insert, and then I'm gonna choose insert again. And this time I'm gonna go ahead and choose bevel, but I'm gonna bevel it outwards. And again, and do something that looks like this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and attach these two together. And I'm gonna go ahead and press the uh, vertexes. I'm gonna press Control A to select them all. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose Weld. And what that basically does is it sets this all as one mesh for me. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add a Turbo Smooth. And uh, you can see that now it's nice and smooth, but we're actually losing the uh, retention of the edges here. So. What we're going to do in this particular case now is we're going to go ahead and use our swift loop. So I'm going to press the uh, the uh, Control S key, and I'm going to place this really close to the corner, something like this, and do the same here at the bottom. And what that should do is that should retain those edges for us. So now it looks a little better. Okay, and uh, let's see. Let's um, set this to around two which should give us a much better result here all right i think this looks pretty good and yeah so what we need to do now is we need to go ahead and duplicate this over so let's go to one so first of all let's just go ahead and delete our turbo smooth here and move this over and we're going to go to copy and i'm going to set this to two and then I'm going to select this and I'm going to choose attach, attach. Oops, looks like that was incorrect. Let's go to the front, to the left viewport here. Make sure we do this properly. So now it's set to two. Okay, just let's just manually fix this. One and two. And that should fix these issues. Yep. Okay, so now we can select this. We'll go ahead and choose attach and attach and we want to go ahead and delete this piece right here uh, because this is not on the on the end and it's not needed let's go ahead and reset the x forms set this to be the center and then let's go ahead and add uh well we can go ahead and add, add our turbo smooth but first of all we need to go ahead and create this outer um, edge here so let's go ahead and choose um the border mode and uh, first of all, we need to go ahead and select all and choose weld. And then we can select our border, it should be, there we go. So we select our border and push this out. And you can see that it's slight, slightly off scale. But that's okay. Don't worry about that, we can just eyeball this. And let's have a look at this. So this just protrudes out. So let's take this. And let's go ahead and choose extrude. And then let's go ahead and take this border and let's push this back a little. And then let's go ahead and add our turbo smooth on top of this. Let's go ahead and set this to about two. Okay. And this is what we get. So this is looking pretty good. Now, once we bake this um, into our low poly mesh, it will look uh, a lot better here. So, Let's go ahead and do something like this. And then let's go ahead and place this into position. So let's go ahead 
and do something like this and we're going to go to the top and at this point I'm going to go ahead and uh, reset the X forms do something like this and then on top of the reset X forms I'm going to uh, place this as close to the body as possible now we can see here that this is slightly uh, slightly indented a little further so let's push this back a little and let's go back there we go and then let's go ahead and add the FFD on top of this and what we can do is we can go ahead and push this into our mesh so it fits a little better All right, so let's go ahead into the perspective view and let's have a look at what we have created here. All right, so it looks pretty good. So let's uh, go ahead and have a look at this. And uh, this would be pretty good. Um, maybe, maybe a little wide. Maybe we can just scale this in a little. Let's see, something like this. There we go. And what we can do now is we can go ahead and reset the pivot point and let's go ahead go to reset and go to center to object and then let's go ahead and set the y to zero and go ahead and add a symmetry let's go ahead and set this to flip and now we have those speakers on both sides well guys with that being said we have uh, gone ahead and created the basic outline of uh, our old time radio i'd like to thank you for watching and until next time i'll see you in the next video where we're going to go ahead and start to build the main face of the radio until then thank you for watching and bye bye for now